the Alphabet Letter Block Christmas Tree. This is a true treasure, and I want to take you along and tell you the story about these ornaments that were in a bag. A gentleman had gotten these for his wife at a thrift sale for Christmas. She didn't know what to do with them. She had not even looked through the bag. She stuck a price tag on it, and I grabbed them up, not even knowing what I was getting. When I got them home, there was a lot of crumbs in the bottom of the bag, and as you can see, all these beautiful handmade ornaments were inside. Additionally, I found those broken wooden ones, and you'll see what we do with them. There were glass ornaments in there that were truly shiny bright, some collectible Hallmark ornaments, and these vintage pieces that are truly handmade, and some of them you'll never see anywhere. So I began sorting, and I found this small treasure here of the Nativity set. So I grabbed a box of the alphabet letter blocks, and I sorted out all of these ornaments by size and theme. All of the wooden ones, all of the round balls, and all of those that were large. I bought these for $3 in the Target Bull Spot, but you can buy these and thrift them from a thrift store, Goodwill, or maybe your grandchildren and children's blocks. And I grabbed a Dollar Tree oval plaque, and you'll understand why this is the best choice. Now, the color I chose to do my platform is the Crimson Waverly Chalk Paint, and I did pre-assemble them, but... I found a better way of doing this, and you'll understand as we go along, so stick with me. Now, first of all, I assembled them, and then I unassembled them, and this kept happening because no one had fully demonstrated how to put one of these together, and I wanted to be able to do this with 26 blocks, so push them to the furthest limit. The oval is going to work to your advantage. And as you see here, I keep working. Now stage your next layer. Have you ever played solitary Jenga? Well, here you go. Here's the perfect one. And here's how to do your layers. So pause this video and you'll see eight, six, five, four, three, two, and one. And once again, solitary Jenga going there. So I staged it out and you see I have these six on the second layer. I've pushed it to the maximum distance, the oval you will want to use, and I pre-stacked them. So the next part that we need to overcome in this challenge is how do we get these ornaments on there and enough space? So glue as needed. And what I mean by that is only place glue where these blocks will be touching each other. Because as you can see, our outer perimeter is further out. And as this stack goes up, it's going to move inward. And that is going to pre-stage this and create platforms from the bottom to the top. So you really truly are going to stage this thing. You're going to build it and disassemble it. Assemble it and reassemble it until you find where everything looks right. You're seeing the letters you want to see. You're seeing the drawings on these blocks that you want to expose and the colors. With the block letters, the alphabet letter blocks, they have drawings on them. They have different colors and majority of the blocks are going to be blue and green. So that means you only have three red, three yellow, in three orange within this 26 blocks. Now, I elected to spell my last name and mine and my husband's first initial on the bottom layer. Now, here's the story with the blocks. As you are putting them together, glue only where the wood will be touching. And this is going to be memorabilia. You can do the alphabet letter block tree in different themes. It does not have to be Christmas oriented. You could use different figurines and all sorts of different themes. If you are a sports person, do it in sports. If you are someone who has a lot of leftover Polly Pockets from your daughter, 
use those. If you're someone who has miniature, small cars, anything can be a theme. And this is a most awesome gift. And you can paint your platform any color that is suitable that will complement the theme you're going for. Now, I left this in because it's so important for you to understand this was not an easy task. I assembled and reassembled this, pushing it to the limit to make sure I had these platforms. And thank goodness, these vintage ornaments that were in this bag, no one even knew what was in that, came available to me through a thrift. And that thrift find was the best find because they included ornaments that I have not seen since I was a child and lived at home. But instead of throwing out your ornaments, how about making one of these trees? So we have everything glued in place. And as you can see, I have my last name on the bottom, my husband and I's first initial of our name. And this will give conversation as an I spy or finding the hitting thing on this tree. And every time you look at it, you're going to notice something you didn't before. At the very top, this Santa Claus and the snowman, those are hallmark vintage collectible ornaments. You will not get them but the one year they're issued. And many of these ornaments, they were a one of a kind. You're only going to get those in the set if you happen to come across them. But think of this more openly. These blanks, that little treasure I found in the nativity set, I am going to place it right there. This is such a treasure I found in this bag, and there was so much more I couldn't even put on here. Now, as I'm going about, I'm checking to see where are there blank areas that need filling in and to assist some of the broken ornaments. On the Santa there, I put a wreath on his arm that was broken off, and I staged some trees about him, and that made that blend in just well. These little glass angels, ceramic, they have children's names on them. It just so happens the little girl is Morgan, which is my last name, and the a little boy named Evan. We lost one of our nephews this year, and as a memory to him, we put the Evan angel on this tree. So you can find these tiny treasures. I chose a one-by-one one square block, and I put a four-inch platform underneath. Get you a wooden dowel, and do you a countersink screw in the bottom. Take the dowel and drill you a quarter-inch hole in the top of your one-by-one one block. It can be as tall as you like. Mine is around three inches. Don't be stingy on the wood glue. Make sure you smear it on the entire part because remember, this is very heavy now and it's wood, so it's solid and we need it to hold up for a long time. Put wood glue down in the hole, some on the dowel, and make sure you drill a quarter inch underneath in the platform. Now you'll place it there and you're going to use your hot glue so it'll set quickly. That way, the wood glue has an opportunity to cure and dry overnight. That way, it will hold all this weight and it will stay. <clears throat> I chose to put mine on this pedestal so it would be up. And that way, it is not drowned by anything sitting around. And if I want to keep this up year-round, I can. Now, if you're enjoying this video, please give it a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. That lets me and YouTube know you like it. And it also has an opportunity to be served to people who like videos like you. It's a way of sharing me. But that's not the end of it. If you enjoy Dandy Soap DIY and this particular nostalgia, vintage, ornament, alphabet, letter block, Christmas tree, subscribe to the channel and share this video with a friend that you found that would love this idea too. So my bucket list of three years ago wanting to make this tree finally came true. Merry Christmas from Dandy Soap DIY. And until the next DIY, this is Elizabeth, and I'll be crafting y'all. Have a happy, wonderful, safe New Year. This Taller Tree DIY is the Standing Christmas Tree, also known as the Christmas Tree with Legs or Legged 
Christmas tree. So the items I've selected, I cannot stand it. These are the cutest booties I've ever seen at Dollar Tree. Grab one of the styrofoam tree forms and paint it. I painted this one, the fern of the Waverly Chalk, and the greenery I purchased from Walmart. Now, the reason why I colored the base is I didn't know how this greenery was going to cover or how well it would cover, but I did want to make sure that nothing peeked through on the base. So go ahead and take the time to bend those pieces. You can get this nine foot garland from Walmart for 20 bucks. Use the foam glue from Dollar Tree, and you could also use the wrapping garland from Dollar Tree. Now, I decided to go on the outer perimeter versus laying the greenery up and down. One, I used less, and number two, I got better coverage. This foam glue is remarkable, and it's on contact. It will not degrade your styrofoam, and it will take adhered in less than 30 seconds. So if you just hold it in place momentarily, it will stick. And it, like I said, very quick contact. Now you want to start that first layer at the very edge bottom, and then you'll begin placing the layers as you work your way up the cone. So once again, if you get this garland and you take it apart as I did, you'll be able to bend the wire in this and wrap it around and that will help stay in form while the glue takes hold you can try it with hot glue but i have found it degrades the styrofoam and a lot of times things will begin to fall off well we only need this to hold long enough until we get to the next step so as you can see i didn't have to use a whole lot of garland i can actually keep these about half an inch apart from each other if not more and as I went up, I could easily place where I needed pieces. So as you can see here, take the time to straighten that garland and then bend it into a circle form so it's already ready to go around your cone. And then you can easily hold it in place with one hand that you placed your foam glue and you'll be able to snip it with your floral clips and place it on there. And see, once you get to that third round, you can cut them in half and you'll just be placing a little piece. And then the next layers, it'll be even less. When I got up to the top, I went ahead and put glue all about the top and the upper edge, wrapped that last garland, and then the piece that I had to snip off, I curved around in a circle and placed it on the very top. That way it did have a hole, but you cannot see it. And you'll understand why when we get to the next step. So that looks pretty good. Make some adjustments. I've, that one slid up on me, so I just slid it back down. Now these greenery stems, they are just like this. When you get them from the garland and you snip them away, these bundles have Fraser fern, they have this cedar fern, and they have the fake pine that we just laid down on our tree form. Now take the time on these, when you touch them, that whole one and a half to two inches extending there does not have a wire. And when I hot glue this, I only stop exactly where that wire's at. So I only put it the length of the wire for the greenery. Glue it right straight down on the fake pine needles that we wrapped around the outer extremity and then once again you'll go all the way around you want to put these kind of close together but allow about a, I don't know maybe a half inch difference between the two and you'll understand when we get to the next step make sure that that one and a half inch is that has no wire on, on it or in it is hanging down below and they'll give it this nice little skirt to it and make it look more natural like a true Christmas tree. And let the flippy part, the flimsy part, hang beyond. Now, with the same cedar floral greenery, I am moving it up and I'm making an adjustment here. I want it to look natural. I want it to look 
on purpose that it is truly a tree with layers. And I probably moved that one up a good two to three inches above because I knew that two inches didn't have a wire and it would be draping down and that was perfect. You'll slide it in between the two and once that glue gets an opportunity to take hold, go back and pull out the leaves underneath so that it's fluffy and they're sticking out and you'll see all these dimensions and layers upon your tree. And it's looking pretty good. And see right there, you can just lay it in between the other two that you put on the first layer. Now this will be the only other layer we place on this tree. We will not put any more on it. And truly see, I'm just sliding in between. And I figure that out after I done put on one or two that I didn't have to work so hard to separate those leaves. And voila, it looks so good. Now up top, all the little wires, take and twist them together. And I took, you know, like the longest one poking out and twisted it around the others. And as any popped out, I did the same thing. I grabbed the next wire and just keep twisting them around each other because I wanted this to bend over. And just look at your tree. Take a look at it and stand back a second and just say, okay, I like this side the way it looks. So I want to curve those wires in the opposite direction so that I can really show off the prettiest side of the tree. And I'll be honest with you, this thing looked good all the way around, so I could have bent it any way I wanted to. It was not hard to decide. And once I get that situated and bend the wire over, I'm ready to start putting on a wire at the top. Now this is what I was talking about. Those bundles, this big thick wire holds them together and it's wrapped with this curly nylon twine. Save that, that'd be great for messy bows as well as any other kind of decoration. And the color is brown and it's gorgeous. So that thick wire is real bendy and I just bent it over and stuck it in the hole of the greenery we put on the top, at the very top, the hole that no one can see, and put it in line with my bent floral wires. So take one more greenery and lay it there and then twist the upper part of it. So leave half of it untwisted and take the other half and twist it around the wire. Once you get that into place, you'll take a secondary one and this one, do the same thing. Put it, you know, above that and glue it on. Now, once you glue that there, you're gonna see what a genius here did <laughs> because I, w I wasn't even thinking, but I glued it and then I held it at the halfway mark and twisted the difference around the wire. And so I think, okay, I've got this situated. This looks pretty good. Let me just check behind, twist it a little bit. There's where I made my mistake. Now, I just glued it. Duh. <laughs> so just do as I did if you, you know, have to swish it around, just glue it back down. Well, I wasn't satisfied with that. I really, truly wanted this thing to stay in place. So even after I did that, my insecurity, I went and got my floral wire and I wrapped it around that upper part because you can't see it. That ensured me it's not ever coming off. Now, I couldn't make up my mind, do I want to wrap the legs in burlap or do I want to just stain it? So I took the Waverly Antique Wax and two of the six inch dowels from the Dollar Tree packet. And I just used, put the wax on the cotton swab there, slid it down the sticks, and voila, they were done in just a jiffy. Now these most adorable booties I've ever seen. I could not believe they had this as a ornament. And I'm gonna use it. So I grabbed a handful of pebbles and I put it in each booty because with the florals that are a little bit heavier and I didn't want it to topple over. So I took me a floral block and that foam and just cut it with my putty knife. And that is the sharpest thing ever, best smooth slice you're ever going to get out of your floral foam. And the Dollar Tree floral sponge or foam is what I'm using. Foam glue from Dollar Tree placed in the foam and then put the dowels in there. Now I'm marking the tree to line it up 
and I apologize for getting out of the screen here, but you get the gist. I put the glue in the tree form and in the foam in the shoes and stuck the dowels through it. Now, the good thing about this foam glue is it's going to give you some working time. So don't panic. It does take contact really fast when it dries, but um, and it'll stay permanently, but you get a lot of working time. So once I've got that official and I've now placed the legs into my standing Christmas tree, and this Dollar Tree DIY, you'll be able to get everything but that greenery, and you can use the Dollar Tree greenery. So get you some of the polyfill, Use your hot glue, put it in the top, and leave a distance above your booties there so that you can put that polyfill there and that just mask the floral foam in the bottom. Now we must have a star. My trick is I use either painter's tape or duct tape or electrical tape, just some kind of tape, and I hot glue my star because this is metal to wood. So anytime I'm doing a sign and I <clears throat> need to use a hanger or make a hanger, I always put my hot glue, I use tape, put it in over top of the hot glue. It is never coming off. I've used that method for years. I actually discovered it 20 years by accident. It's my go-to. Now, I have some wine bottle lights, and you can purchase these from me through my website. You'll find that website down below, and it has more lights on it than the 10 count seated lights at Dollar Tree. But you could use the seated lights and be fine. If you want more lights like this, I employ you to purchase the wine bottle lights from me, or you can use my Amazon affiliate link. I'll put it down below. And the cool thing is once I wrap this, I put it between the legs underneath, grabbed some floral wire, wrapped it on one leg, twisted it around the barrel of the wine bottle light packet and then back around the other leg this allowed me to be able to slide the wire upward and completely conceal the wine bottle light little compartment battery compartment and i had it turned to where i could easily switch it on and off grab you the berry garland from dollar tree and i elected the red i prefer it it's beautiful wrapped it it was and then just cut it off where i no longer needed it make any adjustments to your lights and garland and voila is this not the most adorablest cutest little thing you have ever seen i am so in love with this standing christmas tree walking through christmas tree leg christmas tree if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed to the channel well go ahead join the diy team and until the next DIY, this is Elizabeth. I'll be crafting y'all. Merry Christmas. Make your DIY Dollar Tree walking Christmas tree. Hello and welcome to Dandy Soap DIY. This is the full tutorial on how to build the Christmas sleigh along with the primitive snowman. And we are going to build him complete. So this is how to build a primitive snowman and how to build a Christmas sleigh. Now I'm using the canvas drop cloth from Walmart, but you can use muslin cloth. So you'll need to cut one 9-inch circle and one 12-inch circle to make a more elongated snowman. This will shorten your distance. So you're going to place a running stitch all the way around the inner perimeter of your circle and I usually kind of clip mine and hold it in place while I stuff it fill it with polyfill and this will begin to take shape add a little bit of cinnamon to truly give it a primitive touch and once you are content with the polyfill you can pull it up and mash it and shake it to get it just right I also added a handful of small stones or pebbles in the bottom of mine to give it weight to hold it down. Now you see that I'm using a quarter of an inch ribbon. This is leftover ribbon that may have come on a gift or something I had, and I am using it because it's thicker to go through this canvas drop cloth. 
Thread doesn't do really good, and you have to double up. So cross-stitch thread works really well, or tapestry thread. But these small ribbons, as you can see, it will draw it taut, pull it up real tight, and snug. Now, when you do the head of your snowman, you're going to do the same thing. So trim off any difference that you didn't gather up. And begin filling the head part, the 9-inch circle, with polyfill. Once again, a little bit of sprinkle of cinnamon. And one, that takes away that odor that comes from the canvas drop cloth, and it makes it smell good. Now, we're going to attach it. And as you see, the part that's gathered for the head is up top. That will be camouflaged by the top hat, and it will help this to take form better if you sew his head to the body on the soft side that's already stuffed. Once again, using some scrap ribbon to attach them. You do not have to be specific on these stitches. The point is to get the head attached to the body as close as you can underneath because all of this will be covered when we begin decorating our snowman. So the primitive snowman looks very primitive and we will make him look even better. As you see, I just keep making my stitches. Now he's attached together. Shape him up a little bit and trim off any excess ribbon that you used once you get it all tied together. So now we're going to make his top hat. All snowmen are complete with a top hat. And I always keep about a four inch, four and a half inch metal lid around because I like the brim of the top hat larger. You'll cut two cardboard pieces the same, and you can place them together. This makes it easier. It gives it a more firm surface, and I cut it in the center and cut the middle out. This makes it easier when I go to cover it with felt, and it will take the task out of it really smooth. And if you have foam core board, you could use that as well. I just need something with strength cut you about a two, two and a half inch strip of felt and begin gluing it around your cardboard disc. If you have a better method of doing this, by all means use it. This is just how I am trying to develop a felt top hat. And once again, I'm gluing the felt around the ribbon spool. All of this is repurposed. So I keep my ribbon spools because I make a lot of top hats for snowmen and other characters that I build. So here you see me just trimming it down to get it just right. This will cover the open end of the ribbon spool. That's all it's for, so that I will have a smooth, flush top to my top hat. I glue my felt on, and I recommend using a good glue stick. It works even better than the hot glue because you don't have to smooth it out. It's already slick and smooth, and it gives good adhesion. Once I've got my top covered, I just trim it. Now, we will be doing a little more to this, but I will give you a tip here. Whenever you are doing this, you can use a black magic marker to color in the cardboard. However, if you decide to trim it out, that's not going to make a difference, and you'll see that I do that as well. So let's glue our top to our spool, and now I'm going to use some of this black cotton cording. And I purchased this at Dollar General. It is pure cotton, and it is solid black, and it's basically like a just a cotton twine. It's not a G-twine. It's a cotton twine. And trimming out the top of the hat. This smooths it off and covers up any minor imperfections. I'm attaching the hat now to the brim. And this will finish off the hat. Voila, here we have. Isn't that cute? And it's going to fit atop of his head perfectly. As you build your primitive snowman, you can determine what size hat he needs and you can use like I said, ribbon spool, cardboard, or in, maybe you make a smaller, taller hat, you could use a paper towel board or a toilet paper board. 
Now, I have these beautiful little black safety pins, baby safety pins, and I select three of the same size. You're going to love this trick. To create his carrot nose, I always have some orange burlap ribbon, and I had gotten this during the fall, and I just take a two and a half by two and a half inch piece square, and I roll it up and glue it together, and I wind it really tight. This makes it easier, and it gives it a larger side and a narrow side to make it pointed just like a carrot. If you have regular burlap ribbon, you can use your Sharpie orange marker and color it orange, which you've seen me do in the past. Once you are content and happy with the size of the carrot nose, you can trim it down. I'm sizing it up. Now, at this point, when you glue it, make sure you press it well into the fabric. It's not ever going to come off. And if you have time, you can use tacky glue. I'm selecting two of these small pearls I got from Dollar Tree, along with my black paint marker. And I'm going to paint these little pearls black because these will become the snowman's eyes. A pair of tweezers are really handy when you're doing these small items. I always keep this pair in my crafting room, and it is part of my tools. Voila, there's his little eyes. He's got his little nose, and I'm going to give him a smile. I generally use buttons. You guys know I, I love my buttons. I use a lot of buttons, but for this particular primitive snowman, I wanted to use cotton, cording, and threads and anything that would be small to keep him, I don't know, more charming and whimsical. So this whimsical snowman has a smile now, and you'll need some really pointed, sharp scissors to trim that off. Now, the little pieces you trimmed off, watch this. You're going to love this trick. We're going to create him some eyebrows. And once again, utilize your tweezers. They are handy tools, and put just a dab. If you don't own the cordless Surebonder mini glue gun, it has a micro tip, and I love this thing because I can get in small places. Now, this is what we're going to do with those safety pins. You're going to place it through the fabric just a little bit, put one of the bells on it. These are the little mini red bells <clears throat> that you get from Dollar Tree, and then you will close it up. As long as no one undoes the safety pin, the bell will stay on his chest. And they are slippery, so <laughs> you've seen it take off with me. And I put three on his belly. And these sound so cute and jingly. He truly is a whimsical, primitive snowman. And this is how to make him. Keep in mind, these items, when you make these by hand, you do them with love. They took a lot of time, and they can be heirlooms that will pass down for years. Grab one of those peppermint stick fabric quarters, fat quarters from Dollar Tree, and the red burlap ribbon I got from Dollar General. And I am putting that around the brim of his hat. Once again, if you have minor imperfections, all of it will be masked and disguised. So do not keep that from straying you from proceeding with making this beautiful little whimsical primitive snowman. The checkered ribbon I also got from Dollar General. It has a wire in it, so I took the wire out of the ribbon and doubled it with the peppermint fabric that is absolutely adorable. I fell in love with this fabric. It is beautiful. I am so impressed with Dollar Tree and what they have to offer us. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, consider subscribing and make sure you save this to your playlist so that you can go back and watch it and make your whimsical primitive snowman. I really appreciate the thumbs up. If you're liking this video, give it a thumbs up. It lets me and YouTube know that you enjoyed the video and they'll show you more of the like. Now, when you clip the bottom edges of the ribbon you can fray it out this truly gives it a primitive look and I rub it with my hands to rouge it I grabbed one of my wooden stars and I placed a few little cut off 
greenery pigs that I've been using for Christmas decorations. And I glued that to the back of the star so that I can use that as his cloach on his scarf. You can decorate him any way you like. This will just give you some ideas. And I would love to see your photos and your take on making your whimsical primitive snowman. Now for the finishing touch, you must add cinnamon or cloves or allspice, anything like that that's your powdered herbs, and just a sprinkle. I use every bit of it. You'll see me touch down on the mat and put it on him. I grab me a brush and massage it in really good and dust off anything that will just, it looks better. You'll see how smooth. This is the difference, and he is beautiful. Now, this is Rosie. You've seen me use it before. This is a mini desk vacuum. The affiliate link will be found down below. I implore you to get one, and especially if you use glitter. And oh my goodness, I love it. Kathy Jo DIY, thank you so much. I've been using it ever since. All right, so we want to make a Santa bag because our snowman's going to be escorting Santa's gift bag versus Santa Claus. And you can also make a primitive Santa Claus with this same pattern. Just simply change out his dressings and make him more like a snowman and add him a little beard. Change his hat. It'd be so great. I took a skew and cut it and glued it to those mini drums you get in the pack at Dollar Tree. I also get the mini gifts and I take ribbon and replace that metallic foil paper with ribbon instead. And it's super easy. They are just foam cubes. You could use your packing leftovers that you get. Maybe you purchase from Amazon using my links. And when they send you packaging, I always buy something that's got some kind of styrofoam. And you can cut those into cubes. But this is pretty handy if you grab a pack of those from Dollar Tree and you want to reuse them or change them out. I have used them for years. I've changed them out several times, putting different fabrics on them. So now I'm going to take the metallic full cord that comes with it, generally hangs ornaments, and I put it back on the packaging. You can also use ribbon or string. So let's make his sack. I have this velvet ribbon and the foam glue from Dollar Tree I highly recommend. Get the regular dry cube and glue it together. They'll double stack it. You should save this video to your playlist by clicking the plus button and subscribe to the channel. That way you can go back and review this video at your leisure. And as you build it, build along with me. Watch the video, pause it when you need to, stop it as you need to, and watch it as many times as you like. This way you can get back to it really easy by saving it and creating your own playlist. So I glued two pieces of the felt velvet ribbon together and I made it the size that I wanted so you'll have to contour this and customize it to the size that works for you. I wrapped it on the bottom just like a gift and glued it into place. This has a wire ribbon to it so the trim was very beneficial and you can get this one from Dollar Tree. A lot of times you will find it at Christmas with this little shiny red trim. And I took the matching coordinating fabric that I selected with the peppermint sticks and put it around the bag. That just really topped it off as Santa's bag. The wire trim that I cut off of that ribbon, I'm showing you how to make a shoe string bow by simply making it like an awareness ribbon and twisting it, trimming the tails, and voila, you have your ribbon, glue it into place, and you are set. Now you have your Santa bag that can also go in the backside of the sleigh. Take those little gifts and put one of the picks sticks in them or even a wooden skew, a toothpick, it doesn't matter. And you can burst through the fabric as well as into the styrofoam. And once you make that pick, you can easily create the presents pouring out of the bag, just as we've seen for many years. Any kind of 
decoration for Christmas, you always have Santa's bag boiling over with gifts. And the little drums, I glued into place. These candy canes, these are mini ornaments that I got from Walmart, and I love them. So I bought a pack of those. So glad I found them in my stash and decided, hmm, this would be perfect coming out of Santa's bag. And I just glued those into place. I didn't even put a pick on them. Anything to camouflage the green sponge in the bottom, the floral sponge. Now, this is how to make the Christmas sleigh. And I put this at the tail end of the video for those of you who simply want to learn how to do the primitive snowman and not interested in how to make the sleigh. So stay tuned because we're going to build the sleigh. Now, what you'll need to do is mark your reef hanger one inch down from the top. We're going to use the curve that's already in it that hooks upon the door. This will become the axles for the sled. And on the bottom of the sleigh, the sleds and skis per se, and we're going to create axles. So place your needle nose pliers just, below, just above your mark, and that's where you bend it. Whichever direction you want it to go, place your needle nose pliers just above the mark that you made. When you bend it, it will bend right on the mark. So we're going to bring this reef hanger around, and we want that next bend. Once we accomplish that, you're going to need to bring it upward, as you see here. If you're using your needle nose pliers, trust me, you can whittle this thing back and forth and it will snap just like that. We want to take this part and put it underneath the existing tab to lock it into place. And it will hold itself. There's no glue required. Voila, there we go. Now we have it locked into place. You can also use these as cool napkin rings for primitive napkin holders on your table and dress them up. Just another little tidbit using the reef hanger hack. I'm showing you how to do the next one. Same again. And I make the sack one better than I did the first one because, well, I knew what to expect and I knew what I was going to need to do in order to create my axle. And you're only going to need to, we will be using every inch just about of these reef hangers, so you will need two reef hangers. There is no other way around it. If you have a husband who's a welder or who has a lot of metal, you probably have this as scrap that he could get for you and you could use it. So once you make that bend, once again, you're going to bend it backwards and forth and it's going to snap. It is very heavy duty, it's strong, and once you take that tab and put it underneath the other, it is officially locked in place. It's not going anywhere and it's not going to slide out. How about a thumbs up? If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, we'll do. And save this video to your playlist. So mark your slides one inch from the rear and from the front. This will give placement as to where you need to remove any excess metal from off of your reef hanger. Once again, just bend it back and forth. Make sure you put those needle nose pliers just in front of your mark and bend it, and once you bend it back and forth, you have your sled. Make your second one the same way. And whenever you get ready to put it together, you'll notice that the curves in the front, where the reef generally hangs on the reef hangers, you'll want to kind of uh, finesse it a little bit and bend it out a little bit so it's not so curved. Take a sanding sponge and smooth off the edges just in case. There was absolutely no shards, no sharps, nothing. It was smooth, but I did sand it just to make sure that none of that scratched my tables or 
my fireplace, anything like that. I didn't want scratches on my furniture. So lay the two axles an inch and a quarter from each other, and you're going to separate your slides one inch. So you need one inch apart on the sleds, and now you will set your axles one and three quarter inches apart from each other. And you want that head clearance from the front so that when you put your crate on, it's not going to bump it. Mark where those go. This is important. Sand these axles just where they're going to be touching metal to metal. This will give permanent adhesion, and it's not ever coming off. Do the same thing to the sled. Sand them where the axles will be sitting. You have your marks there, and it's not going to come off, and you're going to be gluing this. Select a heavy-duty adhesive such as E6000. You could use Loctite. I happen to have this Gorilla Glue that I have bought some time ago, and I'm going to be using it. It will give you working time when you use the Gorilla Glue or the E6000. You can go ahead and put your adhesive on there and place your axles onto your sleds. Now you will notice I haven't painted my crate yet. And you can select any wooden crate from Dollar Tree that you like. You can use the open-sided or the closed. And I'm going ahead and putting my adhesive on it. And this will have standing time or what we call working time. So I will literally just leave it sitting there. I'm going to take Tuscan Red to paint my sleigh. And the reason being is I select this color. It's an apple barrel color. And you can mix the crimson along with the ink if you're using Waverly chalk paints to officially get this primitive rustic red, deeper than regular red. Put some weight in it and let it sit overnight and let it adhere and cure. It's not ever coming loose. So this is how you use the white wax method. You'll use your white wax and the brushes for the wax brushes. I'll use the affiliate link down below. You can get these brushes, $10 for two of them. You get two different ones, this rounded one and a flatter one. Buff out any difference once you massage the wax onto your project. Place Mod Podge on the inside to preserve it and give it a shine so that it's not clinging or picking any fabric she may place in it, and voila, we have our sled. We're loading him up. We've put the Santa gift bag in the back, a couple of candy canes, and this whimsical primitive snowman is so darn adorable. Oh, my goodness. He's so cute, and I just love him. He is gorgeous. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, do. Please like the video. It helps me get served through YouTube to other people. And until the next DIY, go out, make your Christmas sleigh. Merry Christmas. And this is Elizabeth. I'll be crafting, y'all. Bye. Today we're going to make a do-it-yourself Dollar Tree Santa boot. And this DIY Santa boot is totally affordable, budget-friendly, and repurposing a two-liter drink bottle. We're going to use the chair cover from Dollar Tree and some foam core board. Basically, cut the bottom part of your two-liter bottle and cut maybe a 8-inch to 6-inch upper piece for the boot. You're going to trace it out onto foam core board and take you a pencil and connect the circles. But leave a little bit of a contour dip there, and voila, we have our foam. Make sure you mark the boot and the toe. This will be your template for later on, and you'll be using it. I'm going to disassemble this Dollar Tree chair cover. It has plenty of red felt and white felt that will make the trim for the boot collar. And basically, I took a pair of scissors and started de-stitching it. De-thread it and save the white for the collar. So I'm going to teach you some easy measure math from a seamstress point of view. As you take the scissors and strip out those stitches, cut off the little ball. You might use that pom-pom for something else. 
and it can easily almost tear apart. Just a little snip with your scissors. Now this is the easy measure math. Basically, take the small part, fold the corner of your felt inward to the center. And at the center halfway mark is going to give you a complete square that you need. So you can check it just like I'm doing and make sure that it reaches to the center of your piece. Cut out your square. And once you have this square cut out, if you want to use it just as it is, you can. But I'm going to show you here how cumbersome it can be. Because this felt is true felt and it's thicker, it's going to be a little cumbersome to try and tuck it in. So let's make our easy measure math of measuring out our square big enough for any circle that we need and create us some thread here. And we're going to make a running stitch in the inner perimeter of our felt. And just stay at least a quarter of an inch from the edge. They'll give you enough to grip and pull back in. So when you gather it up here, you can put your toe into your felt there and just check it. And that's what I do. Now, it looks okay and you can use it this way, but really when I got it all gathered together, see how I'm seeing those little lumps? That didn't suit me. So I went back and grabbed the foam core board again and cut out a small circle just like we did before but that complete circle for the toe. I placed it in the bottom then put my bottom back in of my two liter drink bottle and gathered it up. Now we can glue it onto our foam core board and it'll start taking shape and you can trim down your foam core board until you're content. Now here's easy measure math again. Roll up the upper half your six or eight inch part of your two liter plastic bottle that you cut into your red felt. Any felt will work but this will give you an idea of what to do. You're going to allow three inches above and three inches below and so that's looking pretty good but I thought it was too big so I cut an inch off the diameter of the upper part of the boot or the two liter drink bottle and I used duct tape and taped it together. And not only did it help with the flimminess, the flimsiness of the plastic bottle, it will give it more integrity. So as you can see here, I taped it together, brought my duct tape through the center there and just closed up that seam real nice and tight. And the duct tape from Dollar Tree is excellent. Now see, we got that little bit of a fold, but it's perfectly connected. So let's go ahead and wrap the whole thing with either duct tape or painter's tape. And this will give that upper part of that two liter drink bottle, the thin plastic, more integrity and strength. If you have cardboard, you can do this DIY project with cardboard. You can take and cut it and shape it just allow about eight inches for the upper part. Now this is important, pay attention. Allow that one and a half inch, no glue. You wanna glue the whole side there together except for that inch and a half. We are going to need it. So hold on to your seat, there is more to come. Stick with me on this and you'll very much understand. So see how I'm pulling that back? This is why. Make sure that wherever you connected, that's your back seam so it won't be seen and it ties it all together. We need all this extra that I had you to leave on when you cut your felt to wrap it around. And you're just gonna keep working and finagling there. Yes, we want it pretty snug, but not too tight that you cannot pull and shape it and fold it. And you're gonna bring your felt around to the back and connect those seams. So we are just checking. Now that we've got that in place, let's go ahead and glue the round diameter to the foam core board. And we're making sure that it stays put. Now we can fold the felt back and glue it down. And once again, that felt extra easement that you are leaving 
above and below is going to help you whenever you go to attach this because it will hold itself there for you long enough to get your felt pulled back over it and buttoned down. And this project is so fun and it turns out so good and it looks truly high-end Christmas decor. And once you make these, you are going to love them. You will have them for years and you'll be able to decorate them and change them. So make sure you've got that fold up around the edge there, about two, two and a half inches coming over the top of the toe. Then you can take and tuck your glue gun underneath and make sure that you put the glue on the foam core board and attach your felt to it. And you'll just kind of easily work at it. I do have the video sped up so that I can show you, but it will take you a few minutes to work this so that you make sure that the creases are staying between the boot and the toe, and then it's kind of smoothed out there. Now, as you bring it about, you can go ahead and trim off the difference once you've gotten it glued down at the top. But allow enough so that when you get ready to, you're gonna get more detailed on your gluing now. So now we can officially button down the folded back proportion onto our foam core board and around the edging of the beat. It's nice and soft and folded there. Get it just right. Take a moment to fix that just right. Don't worry about it. We're gonna take care of this. It will be camouflaged. But we want our boot to last for many years. We want it to hold up through packing and unpacking, and we don't want it to be compromised. So it's important to take your time and take these additional steps to glue it into place. Once you've got your seams closed up on the sides and top, then go around the outer edge to make sure that your toe is officially glued. So let's attach the collar around our boot. And I use the white from the chair cover from Dollar Tree. Trim it back, and I did use mine doubled. You can use it singly if you want, but it looked fluffier doubled. This is a good place to use fur or any other kind of trim. I'm excited to hear and see your spin on the Santa boot. Be sure to tag me and show me a picture. You can email it to me. You'll find all my details and information in the description box down below, and I would really enjoy it. So go ahead and glue down the collar. And the red that's on the inside, be sure to glue that down as well. I did not. As you can see here, I went back later and fixed that and realized, oh, I know what I forgot to glue. So now we're going to cut a black felt piece and we're going to glue the boot straight down to that piece. Now you want to leave a little extra right here on the side and that's going to make the sole of our do-it-yourself Santa Claus boot. And the Santa boot is so gorgeous. Now you can trim off any difference. That camouflages any of the foam core board, all of the red going down to the bottom. And now we can decorate it. If you're liking this video, give it a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. Helps me and YouTube know that you enjoyed the video. This ribbon I got from Dollar Tree. And it has got that vintage antique look. And I'm just gluing it for trim. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Join my Dandy Soap DIY team. I would love to have you. Now this ribbon is plaid. I love it. It's fabric. It has no wire in it. And it was perfect for my vintage do-it-yourself Santa boot. And this Christmas decoration is going to be very high-end looking, but super budget-friendly. Might have two and a quarter in it if you count buying the drink, but I did enjoy my cheer wine in my two-liter bottle. Now I'm just going to make an awareness ribbon or a shoestring bow. And you just cross it over each other, get it about where you want it, and take the time to measure the front. That's how I determine where and how big my bow loops are. 
is how far I want it to extend in front or on my item. Now I will trim my bow again, but this is how I made this. You press it in the center if you cross them over, cut you a small piece, and you're going to glue that. That little piece serves as the center and it holds it all together. You can also use a stapler and then take the fabric ribbon, cut it, and glue it around it just like I'm doing here. If you need a way to hold it into place, especially for us with arthritis and any kind of nerve damage to your hands. Okay, so we posed our bow. Let's grab some greenery or any kind of decoration. I've seen these done with Christmas ornaments and little mini ornaments, all kinds of different ways. You could use jute twine, rope, anything like that, fur, Chanel, yarn to make these Santa boots. They are so beautiful. And these here poinsettias, this is probably 1968 when I was born. <laughs> they are gorgeous. They were perfect for the Santa boot. I just had to have them, so I tore them off the old decoration and put them on. Grab me two bells, gold suited, the ribbon and the trim and this vintage look I'm going for. And I tied them together, glued them, and then once I glued those, I attached my bow. And this point, I trimmed off any cordon I had that tied those bells together. I don't need it now. And now you can put you a poinsettia, use it as a caddy for Christmas, utensils, any kind of decoration within it, and just fill it up. Super high-end, beautiful, do-it-yourself Santa boot. Subscribe to the channel, give this video a thumbs up, share it with others. It's absolutely adorable. It's so darn cute. I love it. Okay, you guys, until the next DIY, this is Elizabeth, and I'll be cracking y'all. Merry Christmas. Oh, it's so cute.